it's Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, we will combine gas laws with stoichiometry. So, just to remind you, stoichiometry was about combining a mole with particles, mass, and volume of gas. And what are the things we use? We use the magic number, Avogadro's number, when we go from moles to particles or particles back to mole. We use molar mass when we go from moles to mass or mass to moles and we use 22.4 liters when we go from moles to volume of gas if the gas is at STP. So let's begin with our very first problem. And when we read the problem, the first thing occurs is there is a reaction. So let's write the reaction and balance it. And that's a single replacement reaction. So you can obviously tell me it's zinc chloride plus hydrogen. And that's a balancing. Alright. Now what are the given things we have? That's the pressure. That's the temperature given to us. And that's the beginning quantity of zinc. Okay. Now even though we know pressure and temperature, we cannot directly plug the values in ideal gas law because we have no idea about number of moles for hydrogen which are existing there. So let's get everything else ready. Your temperature will be plus 273 which will be 295 Kelvin. And then we are beginning with 40 grams of zinc and we need to find out how many moles of hydrogen gas will be formed. Now remember moles will never change even if the temperature changes. What might change is the volume of gas at different temperature but not the moles. So we are going to go from grams to moles and then we are going to go from moles of zinc to moles of hydrogen. So how is the work for that? It's 40 grams of zinc going from grams to moles of zinc and from there we go to moles of hydrogen. So over here it's grams of zinc and over here it is moles of zinc. Grams to mole, mole is always 1 and if it is gram, the molar mass for zinc which is I believe is 65.39 and over here this is mole to mole ratio. Look at the coefficient. For zinc there is no coefficient that means it is 1. And for hydrogen, again, there is nothing means it is equal to 1. Let's cancel those common units which we have. And when you simplify all of this, what do we end up getting? We got 0.61171. That is number of moles or N, N value there. And then we can go back and plug and check in ideal gas law which is PV is equal to NRT. So pressure is 750. Volume is something we need to find out. It's asking how many liters. So let's put that V there. N is the value which we figured out. So that's 61171. R. The value of R must be matching with the, the units for pressure. And if it's a top value, then the value for R is 62.4 and the value for temperature is 295 Kelvin. When we solve all of that, we end up getting volume as 15.0 liters and that's the amount of hydrogen. In this problem, let's figure out the reaction first. If you look carefully, it says how many milliliters of liquid bromine will be formed when what are we doing we are reacting chlorine gas with lithium bromide so let's get the reaction ready and then that is LIBR and then that will be again simple single replacement reaction and this is 2 and 2 and that is a balanced reaction now what is given to us we know that we have chlorine gas which is 4.5 liters so that's volume 
then we have next thing pressure which is 600 torr and then we also know temperature which is 25 degrees celsius or that will be plus 273 that is 298 kelvin okay and of course there is a density given to us for bromine and we need to find out final milliliters of liquid bromine form. We cannot begin with stoichiometry because we don't have any value given for any of the chemical at STP. What is given to us is at 25 degree. But remember ideal gas law works for any temperature. So using PV is equal to NRT we are going to find out first of all number of moles. So we have pressure as 600 torr. Volume is 4.5 and is unknown. And look at R. It has to match with torr and that will be equal to 62.4 and then that times temperature which is 298. When we solve for N, we end up getting 0.145 moles of which gas? Of chlorine. Okay, now we need to make sure the answer is bromine, not chlorine. That means our roadmap is beginning from chlorine, is going to end up to bromine. What do we know about chlorine now? We know the moles. So, we are beginning with moles. We go from moles to moles using mole bridge and from there our final destination is milliliters for bromine. Now keep in mind from moles to milliliters you may not be able to go directly. It is liquid and there is density given. So I hope you all remember all that work. Let's write down our road map. So the beginning is moles of chlorine. The next step is moles of bromine. When we come to moles of bromine, your final destination is milliliters. Since it is liquid, we cannot use 22.4, but we can always go from moles to grams and from grams we can go to milliliter if we know the density. So, I'm going to plug and check the many things. That's moles of Cl2. That will be moles of Br2 and this will be grams of bromine. Moles to mole ratio, that is simply the coefficient. We have chlorine and bromine. Both don't have any coefficients. That means that it's 1. This is moles to gram. Mole is always 1 there. And when it's gram, that's the molar mass for bromine which is 159.8 and this is grams per milliliter. Density is 3.12 grams per 1 milliliter. We just need to make sure we flip that and we get 1 milliliter here and 3.12 over here. So when we calculate all of that, what we end up getting the final answer is 7.43 milliliters of bromine. Here is one last problem with gas laws and stoichiometry. So let's see what is given to us. That's volume, this is pressure and that's temperature. Let's list what we have and if we need to convert, convert it immediately. So we have 450 milliliters as volume and we need to convert that to liters which I believe is 0 0.450 liters. And then we have pressure, 800 torr, and temperature is 45, is degrees Celsius. So we need to add 273 to make it to Kelvin, which is 380 Kelvin. Now remember, we also need to get R value, and that is based upon the value unit for pressure. So that is torr, R will be 62.4. Now, instead of going to stoichiometry before, we need to go to ideal gas law and find number of moles because we don't have any idea about given substance with the reaction here. So, 
PV is equal to NRT is our regular ga ideal gas law. Let's plug the values. It's 800.450 n times 62.4 and 318. So when we solve this n, we can end up with the answer 0.18.0 181 moles of CO2. Okay. Now what we do? We need to go back to reaction. The reaction is sodium carbonate decomposing. So that's Na2CO3. And it tells you the products form sodium oxide and CO2 carbon dioxide. And it looks to me like it is a balanced reaction, which is great. Alright, what is known to us? We know the beginning moles here for carbon dioxide. And our end point is going to sodium carbonate. And we need to find out grams, how many grams we have. So let's do our simple stoichiometry then. What do we begin with? Moles of CO2. And how much is that? That is 0 0.0181. From there we go to moles of sodium carbonate and from there we go to grams of sodium carbonate. In order for us to cancel, we need to get moles of CO2 here and moles of sodium carbonate over here. This is moles to mole ratio and how do we get that? It is simply nothing but the coefficient ratio and both seem to be 1. This is moles to gram and when that happens mole is number 1 and grams is molar mass. Molar mass for sodium carbonate I believe is 105.99. So when we solve we end up having the final answer as grams of sodium carbonate and that is 1.92 grams of sodium I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you in next video. Until then, bye-bye. See you later.